So are you one of the thousands of Minnesotans who's been tuned into your favorite public television station watching your cooking show or Sesame Street and all of a sudden at the end of your show up pops the pledge drive and you think, oh man, I really don't want to watch the pledge drive and you reach for your remote and you're about to turn it on to your favorite reality TV show, but then the smart producers at TPT bring on Lost Twin Cities and you're hooked. Well, you're not alone. Hi, I'm Bonnie McDonald. I'm the executive director of the Preservation Alliance in Minnesota, and I'm one of those thousands of people who is just absolutely hooked by Lost Twin Cities, both the book by Larry Millette and the TPT public television series that went along with the book. Many of us were brought into the field of historic preservation by a special place that mattered to us and that was either endangered or lost. Some of us, in fact, were brought in by Lost Twin Cities. And the, perhaps the, the, the most famous of all of those properties that was profiled in Lost Twin Cities is the Metropolitan Building, which was demolished between 1961 and 1962 here in Minneapolis. So, we could think of no better person to talk to us about the Metropolitan Building and what one person called a public act of larceny than Wei Ming Lu, who at the time was uh, working at the city of Minneapolis. So I'd like to welcome you to the beginning of our Perspectives on Preservation series by introducing you to Wei Ming Lu. Hi, Wei Ming. Hi. Thank you for being here. I'm trying to talk about the Metropolitan Building, um, what was happening in the, the public eye at the time and in uh, planning at the time. But let's start with an even bigger question, if we can. So. If you were to view the label of the word preservation, do you think you would call yourself a preservationist, do you think? I would, yes, I think so. For the professional life that comes through, because it's a very long time in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, in three American cities, uh, Minneapolis, Dallas, and St. Paul, and then, of course, all around the country, some advising here and there and then around the world and to try to save building in China, Taiwan, Japan, and so forth. Well, we're, we're very pleased that you're here distinguished, uh, with a distinguished guest like yeah, Ming Lu. I would, uh, I would tell our viewers that we would love for you to read about uh, the career of, of Wei Ming Lu in historic preservation and planning with a biography that we will have online at our website at www.mnpreservation.org because unfortunately we don't have enough time right now to go through the, the litany of success stories you have not only with the planning in Minneapolis uh, the, in Dallas and also in Lower Town in St. Paul, which we hope is going to be a future perspective on preservation. Um, so coming in with that perspective of uh, that you would call yourself a preservationist, how, how did you come into it? Was it a particular place that brought you to historic preservation? I guess one could never sort of predict one's life, so to speak. I came here you're pointing to the, the, the city, city mini, yeah, the city that's, hall right that's there. That's where I start my uh, that work here. That uh, it did not know you know that this was going on, mm -hmm. and uh, and I walk over here to look at these building, and particularly this one, was so so impressive and, uh, and very. Uh, beautiful inside, outside, and, uh, and when I when you're pointing to this one, you mean the metropolitan, the metropolitan building? Metropolitan yeah, building. That, exactly. Yeah. Of course, there are others too, but this one certainly stands out. And I grew up in an architect's family, so architecture is always very important to me. But to see this building, that people tried to save it and did not succeed, was a very sad thing to me. And so. As a young planner, I in initiated two different studies mm -hmm. immediately, and at that time I had some opportunity to do so. One was the historic survey of, of building in Minneapolis, and we engaged Dr. Tobert of mm -hmm. University of Minnesota to do this, and had a wonderful photographer, the wonderful Walker Art Center, took each of these pictures to come really show us the beauty of each of these buildings. So, and that was part of my work, this work, yeah, definitely. 
thought I should orient our viewers to where we are standing because yeah. you've, you've referenced that. So, so yeah. you may ask for those who are viewing us, why are we standing in, in a presumably a very odd location to be talking about the Metropolitan Building? Well, we're standing here in the Skyway uh, here in Minneapolis that connects uh, the crossings, which is a residential condominium high-rise, and the building, uh, which many people know as the former locations of Kieran's Irish pub, but is, uh, is now a commercial office building. This, this location behind us is where the Metropolitan Building once stood, and we're looking out at a uh, parking lot where part of it stood, and then uh, largely this uh, building behind us is what is left of the, the legacy of the Metropolitan Building besides the stone. Can you elaborate a little bit more about the the Metropolitan Building itself, I mean, because you said it was it was one of those places that grounded you when you came to Minneapolis. Tell well, us about it. Well, it, it is a it is a very handsome building with with granite and, and limestone, and, and the way it was designed is one of these uh, early um, what you call it, Victorian or Romanist kind of architecture, and it was so handsome, so strong, so solidly based. The inside was so elegant with the iron and glass. I ride it on the on the on the elevator. It's such a beautiful experience, and you never forget think, forget about that. And uh, I was only a couple blocks away and coming here, and very easily at lunch or other time. And uh, then hear these debates. So very sad, even though many people try to save it. So then we started doing something about it, as I mentioned. Historic survey was one of the first. So, yeah, 65, I believe. So you were planning yeah. 20 years in the future for what uh, Minneapolis yeah, would be. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. it was a, yeah. the, the plan was finished by Metro. Metro, the, the uh, world used to about 65. Metro Center, if I would prepare, probably by 70, 1970. Mm -hmm. So this, I was prepared for 15 years ahead, so 70 for Metro Center 85. So anyway, this, these study prompted Arthur Naplin, the mayor, mm -hmm. to organize, establish a committee of urban environment. I worked with his Q, you know, committee yep, of environment. Committee of urban environment. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also the, the city and all the things. Anyway, so the, when I saw the legislation was introduced, I went there on one cold winter morning, like the, the, I think it was 1971, mm -hmm. and uh, so I spoke at the, at the legislature and spoke about you know, the need to, to do something, to look ahead, and also look at the legislation I think is needed, but also need to add a few more things. I suggest two more amendments. One is related to the uh, suspension of demolition and have a chance of reviewing it before demolishing. Mm -hmm. The other is parking variant, who a very tough situation cannot provide all the necessary parking for historicization, that we'd be allowed to have some variant mm -hmm. variants. But anyway, both of them was passed in, in that winter. So that